Hello everybody, this is Perk to bring you guys a first person replay commentary. This is a anti-mage game that I played about a week ago. Uh, we played this on the Korean server actually. Played with Blitz and three Koreans. Um, I don't remember who they are exactly, but uh, we got on a party with them and we played on the Korean server. So, um, I haven't played an anti-mage game in a really, really long time. Uh, the hero is not very popular right now. Because um, I think part of the reason is people got really good against playing against him. And people got a lot better at knowing what the counters are. And things like that. People buy orchids more often. Um, Sky with Mage is in the game. Uh, Bloodseeker is really good against Anti Mage as well. Um, and I randomed up right at the start, and they ended up counter picking me a little bit this game. So, I think this is going to be a really good example of how to play Anti Mage because um, if I showed you a, a normal Anti Mage game, let's say where there weren't counters, like let's say they have no stuns, they just have slows and things. Slows aren't usually that bad against Anti Mage unless they can close the gap after your blink. Um, Usually you have to worry about silences and stuns the most, and uh, that usually requires mostly like map awareness and um, just playing really safe to make sure that you keep your farm up and things like that. So, um, as a hero, anti mage doesn't really become really strong until he gets at least two items. Um, pre two items, he's he's he has good damage output, but he's actually really squishy, and that's because the first four thousand gold that you spend is usually on a battle fury, and it's really important to do this because it increases your farm rate by so much. You want to be able to farm really rapidly. And it took me forever to pick my hero. There we go. It allows you to farm really rapidly once you have the Battle Fury. And not just farm, but you should also be pressuring. And this is the biggest mistake that I see anti mages do when they play pub games with me, at least, is they get their Battle Fury and then they just go in the jungle. And they don't leave the jungle very often. But what you need to do is you need to do a mix of lane pushing as well as jungling. And occasionally, if somebody shows up solo, you can get a kill on them if you, if you have that opportunity. So it's really important to know when you're able to make that pressure. Um, because I randomed, I was able to start with the Quillian Blade, but if I didn't have random gold, I would get a Stout Shield, I would get a Salva Tango, and either two Ironwood Branches, or I'd get an extra set of Tangos, depending on how the lane's going to be. But if I look up at the heroes up above, I'm pretty sure that's going to be an offlane clockwork, and an offlane clockwork is actually pretty bad against anti-mage. Um, when anti-mage is at his prime, a lot of people were picking clockwork at the same time, so to abuse that, what some anti-mage teams would do was they'd lane anti-mage versus the clockwork in a 1v1 matchup, and um, clockwork basically would get his mana drained guaranteed because every time he would come up as a melee hero, anti-mage could just hit him, drain his mana, and go back to last sitting. And anti-mage's animation is the fantastic. It's one of the best in the game, probably probably the best to be honest. Um, it's very fast, his base attack time is very low, the animation is very low, it's great. Um, he's a really good hero for last hitting, so I actually lasted out of my mind to this game, I believe. But that's partially because I had a quality blade, but also because his animation is so good. Also, hitting, uh, last hitting the range creeps is a bit easier because you have mana break. Mana break doesn't do 100% of the damage that the mana drains, it does 60%, I believe. I actually found this out maybe like a year or so ago. But it's it's still very good damage, um, but it's, it's not like an insane damage increase kind of a thing. So... When I'm not last sitting, I'm going to pressure the, the clockwork. Um, what a lot of carries do, and I think this is this is wrong in most lanes, but they actually sit back and they, they just spend most of their time standing behind the creep wave because they're scared or something. But you need to pressure a bit more when you play a hero like Anti-Mage, and I think a lot of carries should do this, and I do this a lot when I safe lane farm, is I actually run towards my opponents a lot more than often um, than, I, than I do, than I feel like a lot of carries do. It's important to make them feel like you might actually kill them. It shouldn't just be the support's job. Like right now, I'm coming after the clockwork. It's not just the support's job to try to it become pressure, be. to, to like force pressure on the offlane hero. I think last time that I streamed, my uh, audio was a little loud. So what I'm going to do is um, reduce it just a little bit. I just want to make sure that the things aren't too loud for you guys. So I'm just going to turn it down a bit since I'm going to be talking a lot. So I'm just going to hit him a lot, if possible, with mana break. Just and, and I think it's important to put pressure on him as well because I don't want him to be able to get a, I don't want him to be able to get like a a kill on uh, my allies. And I want to make sure he doesn't get last hits. And I want to make sure that he doesn't get some experience. And as a carry, you should always be pressuring just a slight amount. Make sure you watch the creeps. Don't like run at. Don't like run out a hero. And then uh, this is good. I was able to position myself within his cogs. Fortunately, again, we have a kinetic fail. I was so mad about that. I was like waiting for the neutrals to hit him because I knew the neutrals needed to hit him to get him within my last hit ability. But then as the other heroes came over, um, the satyr was like, oh, there's three heroes here. I need to cast a shockwave. And they always like steal the kill if possible. So that's what it seems like at least. They're like, oh, that guy's low. Let's, let's, let's nail him. So he got he got a, a suicide there. I was pretty mad about that. Although in in uh, the, he, the 
Disruptor really shouldn't have failed the kinetic field there. That was kind of unacceptable. He was like hogged in. He could have just kinetic fielded him right there, and you would have been stuck, and I probably could have gotten the kill. But anyways, um, again, just really make sure that you pressure their offlane hero if you can. Make sure you don't miss last hits to do it, but it, in between last hits, you can run after them. And whenever you're playing against a clockwork, you got to be really aggressive. He's going to cog you. He's going to try to cog you. And every time he's about to cog you, rather than last hitting and staying where he thinks you're going to be, you have to run towards him. And almost every time you're going to get pushed into the cogs with him, and this is really bad for him because this gives you two to three hits on this guy. And if I'm an anti-mage versus a clockwork, that's a really good trade. I'm willing to take that. So don't be afraid to, to be a little aggressive versus clock. Almost all clocks are going to cog, try to cog harass you right before you go for a last hit. So right here is a possibility. He didn't end up doing it. That one would have been a little scary because that would have been under tower. But my chances of dying to this are not going to happen. I am checking his mana. I can now see that he has exactly zero mana. He actually doesn't have any mana uh, to his name because I've just been draining him. So this is a completely standard skill build by level 3. I see a lot of anti-mages and pubs mess this up as well. Anti-mages will do stuff like hit level 6 without having a spell shield level. There's no point. Get one of each skill. These skills are all honestly amazing at one skill point. You need to grab these things. It's really important because um, mana break is, is your bread and butter. It gives you damage. It gives you mana drain. gives you lane control against your opponent. Blink is, uh, is obviously super obvious why it's good. This is a good, uh, oh, I messed up a lot there. Alright, good. We did still get him, but I missed a right click. It's really important you don't miss those. It's a lot of damage. Um, and I was able to come back and get more last hits game. But one of each skill is so important. Even spell shield at one level, it gives you almost as much magic resistance as an item that costs you 2,000 gold. 26 magic resistance is amazing. It's really worth getting. I don't care if there's not very many magic heroes in the game. You should get at least one level. And generally, you just need one level because it doesn't really scale very well. 26 to 34 to 42 to 50. Like, by the time you get four points, it's doubled about, but you don't really need to get a lot of levels early. It's not worth it. If you're against, like, a magic heavy lineup, I think you're better off getting stats than multiple levels of, of mana shield. I haven't done the math on that, but considering that almost every top anti-mage pro goes one of each skill, and then they get stats until, like, level 7 or level 8, then I'm going to say that they're probably in the right here. I think it's fair to say, to be honest. So, don't get a lot of levels of... Um, of, of spell shield don't go crazy on mana break levels unless like it's really gonna like win you the lane or something it's it's just not like mana break is great and all it's really good but the extra stat levels are usually better anti mage's strength gain has just been nerfed way too many times it's a 1.2 strength gain it's really bad it's one of the worst in the whole game so you have to like make sure that your survivability is higher and the stat points also give you damage they also give you mana pool once in a while you will actually run out of mana in the early mid game sometimes before you get your battle fairy depending on how much you blink try to be conservative with your blinks but if you blink too much you will run out of mana and those stat points are actually useful to have so um, a lot of the times that you finish battle fairies, or like a lot of the times that people go like skill point builds where they actually put skill points in all their skills, it's actually really it's really detrimental to them because they end up. I ended up getting drained there, but whatever. It's really detrimental to go for that many skill points because by the time you finish your manta, you only have like 800 HP or something like that at like level 10 or 11. And that's just way too low. You have to be a lot more concerned about your survivability than that. And again, I thought that he was gonna he was gonna burn me, so I just want to stay on the inside because he does spend 50 mana just to do that. And again, might as well pressure him. I, I don't feel too worried about taking damage like this. And in some ways, if he uses battery salt, I've done my job anyways. He's now used 75 mana that I that I'm cool with him using, and now he's completely out of mana again despite having a bottle. So. Um, D don't give him any chances to pressure you. You should always put a little pressure on your offlane as a solo hero. And this is what your support should do in every typical tri lane game. They should zone the offlane until you're self sufficient against him. And luckily for me, Anti Mage vs. Clockwork is very self sufficient. I'm sure there's a lot of offlane matchups that wouldn't be so good, like a Phoenix or something like that would not be very fun to play against. Um, a Timber Saw would be a little scary because the pure damage does go through Spell Shield. I, sh I think I should. I'm surprised I actually got that last hit there. I think I should have maybe hit it earlier. but... Anyways, I'm lasting really well this game. If you have 50 CS by 10 minutes, you're doing a good job, but I think I hit somewhere closer to 60 or 70. This might be slightly contested by the uh, clockwork. I should have buttered that up one hit. Most times people try to get um, Battle Fury before they get treads, but it kind of depends on what you're playing against. Um, something I haven't talked about yet is there's a lot of counters in this game versus me. Uh, the main ones are Bloodseeker, followed by Silencer. Um, Ember Spirit's okay against me. It's pretty okay against me. Um, 
he does mostly magic damage, so I won't take that much damage. But his entangle does prevent me from blinking. It's like frostbite, I believe. Um, Tuscar is not that amazing against anti mage. He has a lot of magic damage and a little bit of physical stun, but he's not really a big issue. And clockwork is honestly not a big issue at all, unless somebody has a silence. So <laughs> their counters are okay, but the best counters are probably something like um, Skyrath Mage. If he does use battery salt like this, just make sure you stand next to your creeps. He actually hit me a lot of those battery salts there, but like this doesn't really bother me too much, to be honest. I have to be worried about my HP being max, and now is the time to use the tango, but um, getting the fast ring of health is just really good for making sure that your survivability is high. Was unab unable to get that, unfortunately, because of the cogs, but... Gotta make sure their HP is full. I also bought a TP scroll, um, and that's because there is a, a, um, a Bloodseeker in the game. If he does come top and silences me, it'll silence me for like six to eight seconds or whatever it is, and then he rupture me, and then any damage on top of that is usually going to result in me dying. Missing so bottom. I gotta be pretty careful. I, the heroes I need to watch out for are definitely Bloodseeker, among some others. And Bam drained his mana again. He's going to come up occasionally and go for last hits, but I don't have to worry too much about that. Now, generally, the best setup to have an anti-mage on your team is one anti-mage that free farms, and then a team that does a lot of, makes a lot of space and does things on the map without you. So having four really resilient heroes is really good. In this case, it was Blitz that did a lot of things, um, even though he was a solo mid. A lot of pressure from him means that I'm stuck in a 1v1 matchup, and that's really good for me, because I'm happy to be 1v1 matchup against a Clockwork. Um, this guy seems okay, but not, not as good as me, and I'm last hitting way better than he is, and it's really not that bad. And again, he uses uh, Cogs again, he wastes his mana, I get a hit on him, he loses about 70 mana there. I've got about 57 CS in 9 minutes, that's pretty good. So, generally you try to finish your Battle Fury before you get Treads. Um, I think pretty soon here, the Bloodseeker started roaming a bit more. And because of that, I thought, I should really not be greedy. I can I can delay my, my Battle Fury by a slight amount just to ensure that um, I, I am less likely to die to the to the Bloodseeker. This is really well done by him. I was, I was like super well done by their spirit. He did that perfect. Global Silence from the bot lane. Looks like some stuff's happening in there. Venno's going to die again. But I'm going to fly out my damage items here. Now, um... Should eat a tango here. Taking neutrals is actually pretty expensive. I thought about this a second later. I was like, I should have stayed in lane and last hit. But it's actually kind of good to rotate sometimes like this. So you, for you, for like me to take jungle, and then let our supports take the farm because they they can't farm jungle, but I can. So while it does decrease my overall farm, it increases my team's farm as a whole. And I think I was gonna drop. I draw my TP scroll temporarily. I think this is really greedy, but I did it anyways. I was like, eh. I want to hold my Quelling Blade because I want to still farm fast. Um, it's also really good to go to the jungle occasionally to, to save yourself from a Bloodseeker. And if you look at the map, Bloodseeker is actually coming to look for me right now. Because he knows I'm off the map. But not being in lane has made him a little unsure about his gank. You know, I don't, obviously, that's at least partially on him for not trying harder to look for me. But staying off the map is means people are a little less likely to look for you. And now there's some TPs. I probably should have blinked here, I think. That was a mistake not to blink. Bottom lane is missing. I don't have any ward coverage either, and they have been running a lot past the rune spot. And I want to just finish my battle fury. I'm very, very close to it. I'm just going to try to make sure that I have a, a, an escape path. And I see two heroes in lane. It's a silencer and a clockwork. I don't necessarily have to look to check. It'd probably be smart for me to see what items they have, but... For now, I'm just going to farm jungle camps. Even though I'm really close to having my battle fury finished, I think this is much safer than being in lane right now. Because I have been seeing a lot of them top, and I wasn't always sure the the uh, the Bloodseeker. Like right now, I didn't know where the Bloodseeker was, so I just assumed he was top. He's gonna end up showing up bottom right now, but it's something that you have to worry about very much as an anti mage. Because once you get your battle fear, your game is like unleashed. You're essentially unleashed, unless they have hero counters, and they do. But once you get the battle fear, you're in such a good place that so you don't have to worry too much about dying. But before you get the battle fear, you have to be very careful. It's kind of similar to getting radiance on a lot of heroes. You have to be careful until that point, and then you have to be moderately careful, but at least your farming item is online, and you should be able to just go crazy for the rest of the game. So I'll move the courier over to the secret shop right now, and that should buy my blood or my void stone, and that will fly out, and I'm going to have my battle fury finished. So I was pretty happy about this. It's a really fast timing. 12 minutes is like what you should aim for if you're if you're doing well, um, and my CS is quite high as well, so I'm, I'm pretty content with how things are going. Still a little scary in lane 
because uh, I do have to worry about dying and things like that. Also, the other mistake is uh, somebody put my TP back on the courier for some reason, but... You also have to be a little bit more careful about last hitting now because you do all this cleave damage and stuff. So sometimes if you're auto-attacking a wave, you can make some mistakes. Dyer's so I thought I should buy a Belt attack. of Giant Strength over a TP scroll here just because um, it was Radiance probably a bit better for survivability. The silencer was waiting for me forever. That was so weird to watch. I was like, alright, they're obviously ganking me. That's why I blinked. I didn't think he would be so low. It's easy to see that from, from a top-down perspective like this, but I was not entirely sure. Um, Quelling Blade with Anti-Mage is really good because it increases the damage you do, which means that you farm the jungle a lot faster, and since you are cleaving, it increases your farming speed by a huge amount. So make sure that you do get Quelling Blade when you play Anti-Mage. Especially at this point, if you don't happen to buy it in the early laning stage, that's fine, but once you get a Battle Fury, you should really buy it because it increases your farming speed by so much. So I'm going to buy a TP scroll right here. Should be able to kill him pretty easily. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Uh, then the Bloodseeker came. I could have gotten this skill if Bloodseeker didn't come, for Dyer's sure. I maybe should have backed attack. up, but in my defense, we didn't have a ward, and I didn't know that the Bloodseeker was coming. But it's easy to see again when you're top down, and maybe I should have kept better track of where his hero could be. But regardless, we still got a kill, and uh, we got a tier 1 tower out of it, which was nice by my allies. And I definitely could have killed that clockwork by myself. He can't fight me in a 1v1 matchup because I basically have a double damage now with my Battle Fury. My survivability is pretty good, so. But anti mage is somebody you gotta be careful of. Once you get silenced, you're pretty much dead um, if you can't TP. And I guess I could have TP'd actually once he ruptured me. You know what, that's really what Dyer's I should have done. I actually could have lived there, if I, now that I think about it. Um, I committed, and that was really dumb. I didn't realize it at the time, but the Clockwork had no mana, so his ability to stun me was non-existent, so I should have just TP'd as soon as he ruptured me. So that would have been really smart, but I didn't do that. So he's going to silence me. I'm going to get a little scared, just in case somebody's going to be coming. I'm actually really surprised that hit. I just use my ulti to kill steel. It's good to do that because it guarantees you to have the farm. It's really not that weird to do it. Um, kill stealing is good when you're playing a hard carry like this. That snowballs. But again, I shouldn't have died in the first place. Um, should have just TP'd back. I decided to try trading with Ember Spirit, see what it was like. And he actually does really good damage to me. Um, he hits quite hard. So I'm going to blink away now. It's good to just get feelers once in a while. If he would have hookshotted me there, I don't think I would have died. But it would've, I would have been kind of close. Um, it's just good to get feelers once in a while to see how strong Dyer's you are in relation to other people. And um, let's see what Ember Spirit actually has. He's got Phase Drum, so he actually has really good damage against me. Um, despite me having good magic resistance, my, my physical resistance is really not that high. It's just a stout shield. I've got 7 armor, but my overall HP is so low that it's really not that amazing. So Another thing when you're playing anti Major versus Bloodseeker, you have to be really careful what your HP level is. I knew that Bloodseeker could see me right now, and I probably could have taken actually I didn't know where the blood seeker was and now I see him running along the map he's running for me he knows that I was sitting there farming he was like thinking about coming to kill me and not only is it good to make sure he doesn't know where I am but it's also good to make sure that he doesn't always have a movement speed buff if he's running around and he has 35% movement speed he can use that to get kills on my allies so despite me not really being in that much of a threat it's probably good for me to play it all safer he actually did ward my jungle I just now notice looks like we're gonna lose the mid tower it looked pretty dead to me, and I can't really fight him very well, Radiant's so I'm just going to go farm this. Under attack. Dyer's middle tower there's, a, has fallen. there's a Bloodseeker. I maybe could have stayed and gone to fight, but it looks like my, my Venom is going to almost live. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So we're kind of spending a lot of time in our jungle right now. Fallen. So usually what you need to do, wherever they're creating pressure, you have to go other places as an anti-mage. Because I have my Battle Fury finished, so my farm speed is really good. But I have to worry about where they're going to be. So now I'm going to move into their jungle. Since they're spending all their time in our jungle, and I can farm jungles pretty much infinitely, I want to make sure that I keep my farm up, so I'll just go spend time in their jungle. They're not as likely to be if they're spending all this time pushing. So this game I decided to get a Vlad's immediately after the Battle Fury. Most people would say, wait, you need a Silence. And that's partially true. Like, having a Silence versus... Or, sorry, having a Manta to remove Silence versus a hero like Silencer is really good. But um, I thought that it was a little more important to make sure that I was efficient in farming. Because they're ganking me so much, while it'd be great to have a Manta. A Manta is a really expensive item. And I could instead buy... I don't know if I got experience for this or not. It's a little scary. Yeah, I don't think this is worth it. 
While it'd be really good to have uh, the ability to remove a silence whenever I need to, I thought it was going to be a bit, a bit wiser. He's going to die as well. There's like no way I can save him. Um, I thought it was a bit safer to just make sure my HP is always full. So for example here, if you're killing Ancients, you actually do take more damage than you regen. Um, and while you can still farm them, if you do this enough, it's eventually, you're eventually going to be a lot of money. I'm sorry, out of HP, and then Bloodseeker will know where you are. So I wanted to really make sure that I was self-sufficient in terms of farming, so I decided to go Vlad's first, and I should be flying that out right now. So Vlad's will come out, my mana region will be a little higher as well. I'm going to farm waves if I can, but other than that, I'll, I'm going to go into the jungle. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And I'm also going to press other lanes if possible. It is good to do this occasionally. Make sure you do tread switch before you blink, by the way. It's it's really lazy now too, and it can actually decrease your, your mana gain by a lot over the long Dyer's run. Bottom tower has fallen. It's really smart to silence him while he uses magnetize. And generally it's a lot more important to push lanes than, than jungle. If there's stuff going on in other places in the map, don't be like a typical anti-mage and just go farm the jungle. It's good that you're keeping your farm up, but you need to create pressure while farming. And lane creeps are way more expensive anyways. It's like 200 gold I just got by getting that one wave. And by pressuring the tower, it guarantees that my team gets gold even if we lose the fight. And it also means that they're not as able to do exactly what they want. If I could, again, I could farm jungle camps right now, but you have to push. It's really important. And getting Vlad's is also really good for this, because it gives 5 armor to my creeps, so my creeps will have a lot more survivability. So, now that I'm just taking this tower, somebody's going to have to come defend it. There's a silencer coming. I'm just going to keep hitting it. I did this really sloppy. I shouldn't have gotten hit by the snowball in the first place, I think. I should have just blinked farther and let it time out, is what I should have done. And uh, my blink to TP was really greedy as well, because if they had a clockwork in the area, I would have died. And I actually got really scared when I started TPing, because I knew he knew exactly where I was standing, so... Um, queuing up the Mantis style next. That was really greedy. Radiant's they ended up denying the tower, but whatever. Denied. We got the tower. It forces three of their heroes to shift at the top lane. They didn't actually kill me for it, so it was all around pretty good. Worked out okay. So, And now I go back to jungle farming because it's not safe. But you have to go from a mix of jungle farming to lane to jungle farming to lane. Just going to try to stack this here. Ends up working. I was pretty happy about that. We do have a ward vision of them right now. And it kind of looks like they might come towards me, but... Stacking little camps like this is always pretty good. It's good if your allies can do it for you as well. I should probably blink a little more getting places. I was kind of worried because if I blink into a Bloodseeker, I'd just die. So... Again, back to the lane. Even though the top tower is already taken, I still might as well pressure. Oh, he's got an Aghanims. I don't know what that sounds is for. But, whatever. Alright, so there's my Yasha being finished. I can fly that out. Sometimes it might be smarter to get an ultimate orb over a Yasha, but uh, I decided to sell my stout shield for this. I've got lots of armor and lifesteal, so I don't really have to worry about taking damage from creeps anymore. Should be just fine. It's like, they're still fighting. Again, I can look at my teammates and see like, oh, if I was there, maybe I could get a kill. And that time, that was a good case where I think if I was there, I could have guaranteed the kill on that, the uh, the Bloodseeker. But another thing you can do again is just push. And that's and that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to go try to take the tower instead. Especially with the Yashi here. I'm a lot faster. I attack a lot faster. And, top tower is and under just attack. wail away on this. Your damage to towers is really good, honestly. Because I hit for about 200 physical damage. Dyer's that's fantastic. And once in a while I do look at the fight to see what's going on. I messed this up so bad. I let him get the tower. Radiance that was really bad. I figured he was going to do that, but on the bright side, at least, the Ember Spirit wasn't fighting our team instead. He went somewhere else. That was kind of okay, I guess. But I think that was a really big mistake. I really shouldn't have uh, gotten that tower denied. It actually slows down your mental by a lot because I lost Radiance about I lost about 500 gold. Attack. I actually lost 500 gold because I made that mistake and he, I let him get the deny. I should have juked it out or something, like make him think that I was going to hit it. I thought that he was going to hit me for some reason not, and not deny the tower, but he wasn't an idiot. So I got to like stop assuming that my, my allies are stupid. So I'm level 15, I got more stat levels, I left my spell shield at 1. They do have magic damage this game, but it's really not that much, and it's definitely not enough to like to justify points into um, 
mana shield over stats. When, when your HP is 950, um, you definitely should get stats over a 6% increase in magic resistance. It's really not worth it to go the other direction. So again, I'll just farm jungle camps because those are a little safer and I can kill them. You can basically clear the whole jungle, clear the whole jungle within 60 seconds. And then once the jungle is cleared, I'm going to go back to pushing top because I want to again put more pressure on my opponents. You have to be a little scared. You have to well, you have to be a little a little greedy when you play anti-mage. It's important that you do pressure other lanes like this. Getting your mental style around 20 some minutes is, is pretty good too. I didn't know where the fight was going to be, so I got scared. And I sold my Coiling Blade finally because I wanted to get an ultimate orb. I thought at this point that having my um, my survivability was a little bit more important than having my ability to farm neutrals. So I see there's a lot of heroes, which means that I don't want to farm jungle camps anymore. I also don't want to TP mid and stand there to wait for the fight to start. I want to go push bottom and keep farming. If there is like a huge fight with my team, I could TP because I have a TP scroll. But that doesn't mean that I have to that I have to show up early and stand around and wait for the fight to start. I can increase my farm. And look, somebody rotated over now. The silencer was like, oh. Well, we've got an anti-mage here, and all the other heroes on their team have disappeared, and I said, okay, they're obviously coming to gank me because I want to do something aggressive, so I'm going to now take a really weird way to get back home. I was waiting for the creeps to go past. I thought I would be able to see them, but it looks like they actually snuck right past me. But they don't know where I am right now. Look at, look at, they're all looking for me. They're looking for me in the jungle. They're looking for me um, in the lane. They're looking for, to see if I'm TPing, and you just have to be really aware of where they're coming for you and if they're coming for you. And because of this, we just stopped a push, and they probably should have just tried taking the tower instead. But if they did, I would have been threatening the racks. And if I if I didn't move that aggressively into the lane push, if I just spent time in my jungle instead, then that wouldn't have been very safe. And at that point, I was starting to get really scared, so I decided to TP out. Looking at the map, it looked completely fine. But just kind of try to trust your instincts and, and, and learn things based on... Um, patterns and and things like that i just got scared and i said okay i don't want a chance dying anymore i already made them run across the map and they lost a lot of time i'm just gonna run away i'm gonna tp home and get another tp scroll and try to finish my manta there and now i'm actually really close to the enemies there's a couple of heroes here and there's actually no camp this is actually really dangerous to do to even go that close i think but i'm just gonna wait for the the camps to respawn i could actually farm the ancients I don't want to approach towards the uh, towards that guy though. That doesn't seem very safe. So I'm just waiting for the camps to respawn. I'll take a couple camps and they'll go top and stop that push. Is what I will surely do. My mantis is now a little late, uh, about 25 minutes. Although I do, I did get a Vlad's first. But if I would have gotten that tower, I would have had the the manta finish like a minute or two ago. So manta coming out. So now I can use the Manta to remove the Global Silence. It doesn't work on Blood Rage. You can't remove Blood Rage anymore. But having the Manta is really good. Um, you can use it aggressively to kill supports. Manta split on things like Silencer. People are heroes like Silencer. It's like a fight. This is a big fight, so I definitely want to show up. I, I did eventually get the, the cast off. That was really not smart to, to blink in there. I shouldn't be alive. Uh, but sometimes you do have to show up to fights, basically. One of the nice things about this combo is that he's got a Helm of the Dominator and I have a Vlad's. So we actually have stacking stacking uh, lifesteal, so he's lifestealing for something like 20, I think Highland of the Dominator is like 15%, 15% Vlad's is 16, so we're both, or he's lifestealing for about 30%, which is really good for a crit hero like that, um, really, really good for him, so it's pretty greedy for me to blink in and kill that other guy, but it ended up working out, and um, Mana Void should not be underestimated at all, by the way, Bloodseeker has Radiant's okay int game, um, if we take a look at his hero, I think his int gain is, or his int is, okay, it's really not that good, it's only 600 right now, but, his int is only about 600, but if I use Mana Void, it's basically doing a, uh, 600 damage magic nuke in an AoE, and it looked like I was the one that did all the damage, but I think, what Blitz said at the during while playing was that he he got he got a crit the same time that my mana void got, went off because it did a lot of AOE damage, so we both did AOE damage at the same time I believe, and that ended up scoring some kills, which was pretty nice. So. This 
does not look like a good... It's okay. I don't think I chose my target very well here. I could have done this a lot better. Of magic. But we do end up getting a kill out of it, and as soon as we disengage, I'm going to go farm Ancients. Don't forget to stack if possible. Luckily for me, I should be able to make the timer while waiting. And now I decide to buy my next item. So I'm thinking I can get Butterfly to make my evasion extremely high. I can get a Abyssal Blade. I can get a BKB. I can get a Heart. Those are pretty much your choices. Um, sometimes Abyssal Blade is the right choice. Uh, this game it's not. I think tanky and survivability is the way to go. Because if I can survive the silence, I'm much more likely to just win the fight. Um, like for example, uh, Ember Spirit's a really good hero. But if I get a Heart, I'm... I'm not very likely to die to a lot of the things. In fact, I can survive Bloodseeker better. Um, it's all around generally just better to get heart. You can split push better, you can take tower shots, you can basically guarantee that you get racks if they don't show up. Um, they're calling GG here because they can't fight Blitz very well. I think he must have... He got a Basher, I think, in an Aegis, and he just killed like four of them or something. Um, Radiance bottom tower. Yeah, just put a lot of pressure on your lanes now, especially when you're ahead. And when you do get ahead like this, now it can be really aggressive. And I can take towers even if there's heroes here because I have like so much more HP. And I have a Manta style and I have all this armor. Radiance middle tower has fallen. I have to be a little careful about the damage that I do. Radiant's middle barracks are under attack. <laughs> so I end up surviving. It was pretty scary, but bottom tower grabbing a heart was definitely attack. ended up being the right choice. So there's my vitality booster. I just have to blink over to their fountain Radiant's and I'll make sure I have the, uh, the heart finish. Radiant's bottom barracks has fallen. Radiant's bottom barracks has fallen. Alright, there we go. Many thanks. Got a heart. And now your split push becomes pretty much unstoppable. Radiant's middle has fallen. That's, that's right there is how a typical kill should be. You wait till one of their supports gets stunned and you blink in and Manta to drain all their mana and then you ulti. Easy kills. You can do that to a lot of heroes. Now Antimage isn't like one of the best carries in the game, but he's just a really fast farmer. and That's that's pretty much why he's good. He just farms really rapidly. I wanted to make sure I didn't get disarmed there, so I blinked. Don't think you're done with me. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. So anti mage should just be a nuisance, basically. And if you don't gank him a lot before he gets his battle fury or before he gets his manta, you're gonna have a bad time against the hero. And again, in the late late, he basically gets he's really he's he's like kind of he's good offensively, but a little weak defensively early game if you have the right heroes. And then that transitions to a really strong mid to late game. But his super super late game is kind of bad because. He doesn't carry as hard as a hero like Phantom Assassin, for example. Like with equal farm, Phantom Assassin will win every time because she she has crits and a lot of physical damage and stuff like that. Like even my illusions are tanking a massive amount. Butterfly would be the right choice here, just because I'm already pretty tanky. I want to make sure that he stills my Bladzora. Ends up getting the rampage. So. Is under yeah, butterfly at this point would mean that I, I actually can't die because I'm already really high in survivability. Rupture is far and away like not going to be enough to kill me anymore. And I do like maxing out spell shield eventually. I think uh, some some anti mage players like getting um, literally just stats until the end of time, but I'm not a huge fan of that because at some point the magic nukes that they have are going to be nice to reduce, especially if you have like a heart. So you have so much more HP and you're going to regen during some of that damage that overall the HP you regen is going to go a bit farther than it would if you just had stats, so 
Um, it's a pretty standard anti-mage game. Just try to get your Battle Fury, evade the ganks before you finish your Battle Fury. Once you get Mantis style, you can be a, a lot more aggressive, but eventually start showing up to team fights. I think the team fight, I maybe should have showed up to one team fight earlier, that one that kind of started by the Roshan, um, by the secret shop, by our dire secret shop. I maybe should have shown up to that fight, but uh, the fight that I did show up to was definitely time for me to show up and try not to fight too much as an anti-mage. It's generally more important to split push or get your own, secure your own farm with a Battle Fury. And uh, I mean, I got a lot of kills that game, but I still got 700 GPM. I got 275 last hits in a 30 minute game. That should be very standard if you play anti mage because you should be farming those camps so fast. So that's it for anti mage. I haven't played an anti mage game in forever. Uh, I ended up randoming him here. Um, I've been playing a lot of unranked games lately, and they're good. They're good for for randoming and doing out here or playing heroes that I haven't played in forever. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned more about anti mage. He's not a top tier pick right now, and he's still pretty annoying to play against. But there's a lot of good counters. Skyrath mage. Orchids on Nature's Prophet, Hexes, there's a lot of really good things. And uh, Pure Damage is really good as well. Uh, that's what Bloodseeker has. Bloodseeker is like the best counter, he actually is. But the Bloodseeker needed to kill me a lot more, so that was his mistake. He should have been looking for me a bit better. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. appreciate it, and I'll see you later. Bye.